Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Iglehart, and I am the security supervisor at the Blanton Museum of Art for the University of Texas in Austin. And welcome to our series, Curated Conversations. Tonight's topic is Guardians of the Galleries, a gallery assistant Q&A. I am joined by my fellow security supervisor, Jake Lipscomb. Hi, happy to be here. Thanks for being here too. I would like to start by thanking everyone for joining us today. We made the decision this, for this event, which was scheduled for Tuesday, so that the Blanton could participate, participate in Blackout Tuesday. On that day, we shared a message of our support to all the Black Lives Matter and paused our regularly scheduled event and content. This museum has an ongoing commitment to social justice and will soon be sharing a digital resource that highlights the voices of artists, scholars, and community leaders that have addressed race, inequality, and justice in the exhibitions and, and programs at the Blanton. So thanks for being here with us today. Now, before we get started, there are a few notes. Your audio is muted, so no one can hear you and only the panelists are visible on the screen. We'll be taking your questions from the Q&A window. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a series of icons, including one labeled Q&A. Click on that and type to send your questions. Please try to use the Q&A function for questions instead of the chat function. It just helps us um, answer your questions in a uh, prompt order. Mm -hmm. And because it's happy hour, um, we've actually uh, made a list of, uh, I believe, a couple of different drinks. Uh, and so I hope you fixed your favorite drink as well for this. It is happy hour. Uh, the gallery assistants helped create this uh, special cocktail that we're calling the 10-7 break time beverage. 10-7 uh, is usually the radio code that we used uh, whenever we're um, done uh, with a particular route or we're going off of our radio. So uh, yeah, uh, please, uh, oh, it's not showing right here, but please raise your glasses uh, uh, with me to toast the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, currently, I only have water right now, but hey, uh, it'll, oh, I'll change it to something else later on. But uh, hey, let's get started. Um, we're really excited to share the backgrounds of all the great folks on our team, and uh, I figured that I would uh, go ahead and uh, give it, uh, or start us off, essentially. And um, my name is Jake Lipscomb. I am a security supervisor here uh, for the Plant Museum of Art at the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, I basically started out as a part-time gallery assistant um, here at the Blanton. And it was something where I remember as a student here at the university that I wanted to find a position that was very interesting to me as a part-time student. And uh, I saw the uh, security position open up and uh, I thought I'd apply. And, uh, I had uh, frequented the museum beforehand uh, when I was doing uh, projects or drawings for uh, various classes. Um, I believe like an archaeology class. I had to come back a couple of times to do uh, some of the sculptures from our uh, battle cast collection. And um, from going from our my part time position, I was I was there for uh, a little over a year or so, and I moved up to full time. And then um, after um, a couple of years doing that, now I'm currently a security supervisor. There's a a lot of effort that would be going into being a gallery assistant and um, how well that we would take care of the um, artwork, uh, taking care of the, the people that do <laughs> come uh, and visit our museum. And uh, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for um, my position and uh, just the, family that I kind of came into here. Uh, I didn't expect the, the, the overwhelming amount of love from this institution and uh, certainly, <laughs> I see you Jason, um, but uh, certainly it's something where over the years of being at this institution has shown me that um, we continue to evolve essentially. 
and um, I believe we're getting better and better every day. And even during these trying times um, that uh, we will continue to uh, be the best museum that we can be here in the city of Austin. So that's all for me, but Jason, how'd you start? Cheers to that, Jake. I uh, <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, like I said, my name is Jason Iglehart. I am originally from uh, Kentucky and I um, graduated with a BFA in painting from the Western Kentucky University, um, just on the border of Tennessee and Kentucky. And then I went ahead and tried to get an internship at the Frist Museum, which is in um, Nashville, Tennessee. And it's one of my favorite museums. They were my first museum family. They really taught me everything amazing they have some of the they're a non-collecting museum but they have some of the most amazing exhibitions and people and they really believed in me um before i even believed in myself and so that made me the person you see before you and i was in education there for a while um and then i decided i wanted to move to austin texas and as soon as i moved here i um looked at i went to a museum because i'm an artist and i love art and so um, I love colleges and the university and academia and all that stuff. So um, I just felt like this is the place that I wanted to work. And I went and toured the exhibitions and went to some events. And when a uh, gallery assistant position opened up, I interviewed and got the job. And then uh, about a year later, after learning the ropes and um, understanding um, what it meant to work the Blanton and um, you know just trying to get to know everybody I was promoted to a supervisor and um, it is my mission to make sure that my staff are 100% supported and uh, they're so special and talented um, if you you know you'll see the gallery assistants in every um, gallery they have the blue shirts on and they a lot of them are performers or academics or scholars or artists and they have brought so much to my life and it really does mean um, it's the team that makes the leader and uh, right now is a great time to remember that and uh, I just can't thank my team enough and the Blanton enough either. So that's how, that's my story and um, I'm just so excited to share other people's stories today. Um, and like I said, you probably have seen the gallery assistants. They're at the front door. They're in um, Ellsworth Kelly's Austin, protecting the art. They're in all the galleries. And uh, they are there to basically monitor the collection, make sure everything is safe and sound, make sure you as our guests are safe and sound. And also to answer any art related questions that you might have or any um, concerns or just to talk to, I mean, Art is so thought provoking. Um, sometimes you just can't wait but to go tell somebody and uh, that happens a lot. And so I'm really there. I really love when people tell me how they're reacting to artworks um, and what moves them. And that's probably one of the best parts of the job if not just being around artwork all the time. So uh, with that said, um, we're gonna go over some of the rules and policies that you've maybe came in contact with there. And so one of the people who I think is a great person to explain some of these is uh, Richard Rominger IV. Richard, um, please introduce yourself and what inspired you to work with us at the Blanton. Hi, uh, like Jason said, my name is uh, Richard Rominger. Um, I uh, was inspired to work at the Blanton because uh, my mom actually used to work here uh, in special events. Uh, so she was like, hey, you should apply for this job because uh, after I graduated from uh, Austin Community College for my associate's degree, uh, I'd been working just back-to-back -back security jobs uh, and I enjoyed that. And so that's what I really came into this job with my experience and what I looked at it as was a customer service slash security job. I didn't really think about the art aspect of it um, too much, uh, which I say that because I think that I am a uh, prime example that anybody can like art. Um, just from being in this job and being around all this art and all these artists, uh, I've evolved uh, to 
appreciate art on a level that I didn't even know I could. Um, like there, there are pieces that uh, some people uh, might walk by and, you know, not even give a second look or even really think about it all that much that I can look at and end up crying. Uh, just, just from being in the same space with it for long enough. Um, and uh, I think that everybody has the capacity to like art. There are people that say, I don't like art. I think that they just haven't found the right piece of art, nor the right person to talk to about that art. And that's my favorite part of this job is the prospect of being that person for someone. And I know that you are, and that's why we love having you on the team. And um, if you haven't, I know Richard always is the first person to um, explain an artwork and definitely take the time to um, relate the Blanton's collection to our audi audience and patrons. And we're very thankful for that. And also talk about our rules and policies. Um, are there any rules and policies of, that we have at the museum that you would like to explain to our audience today for their next visit? Yeah, so there's the, um, it's pretty much one of the first and foremost rules. Actually, it's the precursor, precursor to the number one rule, which is don't touch the art. Precursor <laughs> to that is uh, stay at least one foot away from the art. Um, and I feel like it's easy to um, accidentally come off as uh, not insulting, but, um, you know, a little bit aggressive in saying like, hey, please, you know, back up from the art, like as if you're saying, you know, I don't trust you to be this close, but that's really not the case. It's just a, uh, a blanket rule so that everybody's treated fairly. And also uh, there's, a, um, there's a specific piece that we used to have on display that we don't um, any longer, but uh, it's a great piece called um, Street View, I believe, Street Scene. Uh, of LEDs that um, is behind a, uh, a sort of uh, clouded glass. And if you are looking at it like you would look at any other piece of artwork, say, you know, even like a foot away from it, it would just look like a blur because it's a, uh, it's a movie file being played through these very low amount of pixels compared to a traditional screen. Um, but so it just looks like this moving blur until you step very far away from it. And the further far, the further away from it you are, paradoxically, the clearer the picture becomes because your brain is filling in the gaps of information. Um, and once you're far enough away, you can very clearly see, you know, this camera that's seeing people walk on the sidewalk and then behind them cars passing in the opposite direction. And if I was anywhere near this piece of artwork, uh, whenever I was having this discussion of, you know, distance to artwork with someone, uh, I would always, you know, uh, strongly encourage them to follow me over here so that I could demonstrate uh, this, um, this phenomenon of not being able to see the forest for the trees, right? There's, there's a lot of value in I mean, in a lot of things and taking a step back and looking at literally the bigger picture, but it, it, it applies to oil paintings as well or, or another painting that you're, uh, another piece or print, you know, just try to take a step back and take it in holistically rather than focusing in on the little tiny things. I, and uh, thank you for upholding those rules and also understanding um, that, you know, uh, our role is to preserve the arts for future generations. And um, we all love art so much that the last thing any of us would want to see is it be hurt or um, just in any way not available to people in the future. <laughs> so Absolutely. Yeah, and, and that's also another one of my very favorite things is being able to, you know, have one of those like one-on-one -on -one conversations with a kid that definitely doesn't get it yet and be like, hey, you know how your hands sweat a bunch? Well, that's a bunch of oils that can mess up art. And if you want your kids to be able to see it someday, you should uh, definitely not touch it. And it's really cool whenever it's like obvious that they like got it and then they're like, it's one of those things that's a really nice feeling for me. 
And actually, um, talking about that, um, we do have a question or a couple of questions. They're basically the, the same kind of question where, um, as opposed, or as you are, of course, uh, as a gallery system, what it makes you different than being just a regular museum security guard and, and protecting the artwork that's right there? I see. So, um, like what I came to realize is different than is uh, that that level of customer service and like, you know, people want to know where the bathroom is. If you're in a building that has a bathroom, people want to know where it is at some point. Um, but there's this whole other, um, this whole other section of it that was a bit of a learning curve for me because I didn't, I mean, I didn't have any knowledge or even really much of an appreciation for artwork to begin with. But once I started to get that, once I started to build this relationship with this artwork, I was able to be almost like, uh, you know, um, sort of like a bridgeman for, uh, you know, somebody coming in who might not have a, uh, a background in going to museums frequently. Maybe this is their first trip and being able to be that first person to say, hey, it's cool that, you know, you're coming to this new experience. Let me give you some tips as an introductory sort of, you know, put you on your way. That's awesome. I think so. Well, uh, thank you, Richard. Continue the great work. You got it. Um, and moving on, we're going to talk to a, another of our uh, gallery assistants. Um, you may have seen her smiling face in the gallery. <laughs> Um, Diana is our next guest, and would you like to talk about what inspired you to work at the Blanton? Of course. So howdy everybody, I'm Diana. Cheers to everybody watching. Um, so I am Diana Lopez. I've been working at the museum on and off as a gallery assistant since 2017. So I did start off as part-time and, you know, eventually I made it up to um, full-time, kind of like Jake. I've been here a while. Um, I started working full-time in November of last year after I graduated from UT and I came back from my study abroad. You know, I felt very, very happy graduating and having a job. That feels great. Um, <laughs> so like a lot of people, I was introduced to the Blanton while I was attending UT. So in my art history courses, a lot of the TA sessions would actually be in the museum. So I was in there a lot of times. So I was there for like a full semester. I'd be in and out of the museum. And I remember being in there and seeing the gallery assistants, which at the time they had their gray uniforms. And I was just like, whoa, that looks pretty cool. Like they are like walking around the museum all day. Like I want that job. How do I get that job? And so I remember going straight to my like email and I just emailed the Blanton saying, hey, I saw gallery assistants. I would really like that job. Do you have any positions available? And they said no. And so I didn't get the job, but then a year goes by and I finally see that they actually have positions available and I applied then and I finally got it. And uh, here I am. Um, <laughs> so it was a really good job part time when I was a college student and I did quit once. Um, like I said, I was there on and off and I actually went to pursue an opportunity in retail, but you can kind of imagine how that went because I am happily back at the Blanton. <laughs> And like a lot of the other GAs and supervisors have said, I really love my job and I love the people that I get to work with every day. Um, I'm really proud of what we do and I feel really lucky to be a part of a community that loves art and others as much as they do. Well, thank you, Diana, and we love having you. And I know um, that the art is so great and amazing and one of the best parts is that we get to be around it all day, um, but sometimes it definitely can have an effect on you. So do you have any stories about how you may have been affected by the Blanton's collection? I sure do. Um, so <laughs> uh, I think uh, something that um, Richard was touching on is that um, a lot of people have this sort of image of security, which we are the security department. Um, maybe you kind of see us as like, serious or stoic and I know I have that sort of effect on children whenever they're in the galleries they kind of see me and they're like oh she's gonna get mad at me um but no you know as you can see we're a happy bunch and um I personally get very emotional especially being around a lot of powerful artwork um you know basically 40 hours of my week right and so what a lot of people also don't know is that yeah we are in there a lot but 
um, because we are focused on, you know, the people that are coming in and out, like we want to help you out. We want to give you, we want to inform you. We want to do what we can. Um, we don't really get to stop sometimes and just look at the artwork or look at the object labels. And for me, um, there was a while before I could actually read the object label of one of my favorite pieces. And that is um, Cordero Sacrificado by Feliciano Centurion, which is a sacrificed lamb. And it is this beautiful, just like large green blanket with this painting of a sheep with um, a knife in its neck. You know, it's a very powerful piece just looking at it. Um, but I really didn't have a context um, when I first looked at it. I didn't really know what it was about. I just saw it. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. That's interesting. And I like how it looks. But, you know, there was a time where I was in that gallery with the piece and there was like a lull in the people that were coming in and out. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm alone. Let me go check out the information on this piece. And I started reading the object label and I learned so much about Centurion just from, you know, that like blurb of information. And I found out like Centurion was a gay artist and that blanket that was in front of me, um, you know, this blanket that's in front of me, like so many, so many days in a row is um, this work was created the day that he was diagnosed with AIDS. And, you know, that's a very, you know, a very powerful and vulnerable work that I, spend time with and to finally have the full context of that it really hit me like a ton of bricks and I'm sure like a lot of people when they start reading the object labels have the same reaction where it's just like a very powerful emotional response and so uh, <laughs> I remember at that time when I read that I just started crying like I would have been crying like a little baby if I wasn't you know on the clock <laughs> and I, I I had this feeling like, oh my God, somebody's gonna walk in here and just watch me just crying while I'm looking at this piece. Oh no. But um, I guess moral of this, always read the object label. You know, you never know what you're gonna be able to get out of a piece, like even more so than just what's in front of you. You know, the context can really add to a piece. And um, I just think it's really important to be aware of that. And also, add um or at least uh we got a question asking about um what is it your your obviously you have a background in art history um how has uh your, your background uh probably changed your opinion or rather just how has that kind of influenced uh your or how is being at the museum uh put an influence on you or has has that become a factor in your background. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I actually don't have a, a degree in art history. I did take some art history classes just to clarify that. But for me, a lot of the art history courses that we get as a, you know, non art history majors is just comprehensive. So they just say like from this time period to this time period, here are the most important ones. And then they send you, you know, on your way. But um, I think being in the museum has definitely exposed me to a bunch of artwork that I never would have even been aware of, you know, um, like the artist that I mentioned, um, uh, Centurion is, you know, now that I am aware of him, like this is a very important artist and his work should be known and it should be, you know, on the forefront of like what we're learning. But um, it's incredible that I probably would have never even knew about this artist, artist if I wasn't, you know, working the job that I have. And I think that's, you know, something that's important, even for visitors, you know, you may want to be looking for the most famous or the most whatever piece in the museum, but you know, take a moment to just look at what's around you and you may find an artist that you really love and that you never even knew about. Yeah. Um, and before we go on to our next presenter, one more question, but kind of a silly one at that. Uh, <laughs> like, what's the weirdest question that you've ever been asked by a visitor? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Um, I feel like one that we get a lot is, are these real? I don't, um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess they, like, yeah, they are. They're painting. They're by the people that we say they're by. I guess that's one thing that's a little, a, a weird question to ask. I don't know what to say to that sometimes, <laughs> except for, yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> and it, yeah, it's such a startling thing whenever. Yeah. We were asked uh, in terms of like, like maybe the, the European gallery is like, are these real? And it's like, yes. Yes, <laughs> they are, I promise. <laughs> and from this time period, so. Um, 
yeah, I just like that perspective. So, sorry. <laughs> No, I love it. And uh, thank you so much, Diana, for being part of the team and sharing your stories with us. Thank y'all very much. Bye-bye. Next up, we have another gallery assistant. He's somewhat new, but definitely right in part of the team. Um, his name is Christopher Rodriguez. Hello, Christopher. Please introduce yourself and why you work at the Blanton. Hello, Jason. Um, I am Christopher. I uh, like Jason said, I guess I'm the newest one here, but this week, or actually next week, I'll be hitting my one year, so that's kind of exciting. Um, I graduated from Texas State with a um, BFA in studio art and an emphasis in drawing, which is a mouthful. And um, I guess what inspired me to work here, uh, throughout college and, um, and after college, I worked in retail for quite a, quite a couple years after college. And, I, I moved my way into a store manager position and the, the higher I advanced, I started to realize that my work-life balance was uh, struggling and also my art practice had kind of been put on the back burner and I just felt like I was moving further and further away from my goals. So I left my job um, without really any plans, which I can tell you now is not advised, but um, I was looking for something more focused, uh, focused around art. So I found the Blanton and the day that I interviewed here or there, I, I got a ticket to take a tour of the museum. And I remember spending some time in Ellsworth Kelly, which was totally new to me. I was still actually pretty new to Austin. And um, it was midsummer uh, around noon so that lights were getting a lot of action and it felt really inspiring. And then I spent some time in the European section and I started recalling uh, pieces from my art history classes in school and stories and some of the artists. And I, I was not only inspired to spend more time in the museum, but I was inspired to create. And I went home and I started working that day. And um, I think that's when I really knew that this is where I, I wanted to spend my days. Um, and then just to echo some of the other gallery assistants, um, you know, being here a year now, I've realized that the staff has so much love for the art and the museum and for each other. And especially the <clears throat> the work that was done during the pandemic to keep us all together, and even though we were, we we're apart from each other. Um, I think during these uncertain times, it's pretty potent to have that uh, circle of trust and love around you. Yeah, uh, perfectly said. And uh, I'm very happy for that too. And um, one of the other things I mentioned in the beginning of this is how talented our staff was. And um, Chris, uh, Christopher is one of the very talented artists that we have. Um, would you like to explain a little bit about your work? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you. Um, yeah, so I, I work in a, a variety of uh, mediums. My, my focus in school was on drawing, but I, I try to test my hands abilities with as, as many materials as I can. So I've I've worked in wood burning, um, I worked in acrylics and digital art, pretty much any type of paint really, and a little bit of sculpting. But um, more often than not, I find myself returning to, to my roots and working with ballpoint pen. And there are gonna be some, some slides um, shuffling through some of my work that show um, some of the ballpoint pen work and as well as a couple of the paintings. Um, most of my works include uh, this a, a tedious, some may say obsessive mark making. Um, like you can see in this one here. And um, I also grew up with an interest in science. I actually originally went to school uh, seeking a biology degree. Um, so you'll see that a lot of my works include um, this like doodle aesthetic with the tedious mark making and repetitive line work. Um, this one looks like it got cut off a little bit. Uh, mixed with some element of science, whether it be uh, human anatomy or um, wildlife or anything like that. And then more recently, I've been working on a larger scale and working in murals. Um, I have a couple of murals up in the city of San Marcos now. Um, this is a painting of the landscape of the tongue. Uh, it's a microscopic view of the tongue here. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I have a couple of murals in San Marcos. This is one. It um, was done for an apartment complex. And then my most recent mural um, was um, done in December. It's titled Wild Rice. And I'll just take a quick second to talk about this piece. Um, when the city came to me with this commission, I was 
I was supposed to make a piece that represented the city to me. And I, I spent uh, almost 10 years of my life in San Marcos, so it's pretty close to my heart. Um, I went to the river and spent some time uh, looking at the uh, wild rice in the river. And if those of you that aren't familiar with San Marcos, there's a river that goes directly through campus. And there's this grass in it called Texas wild rice. It only grows in San Marcos and it's also endangered. Um, when, I, when I was looking at it, I noticed how much it had grown and uh, how, how, much, how much it was thriving and flowing with the river. And it was, when I first moved to San Marcos, it was very thin and they were working really hard to preserve it. Uh, and that made me think about how much the city had grown in those 10 years and how much I had grown and my friends um, had grown, the friends that I'm still very close with. And so I thought that the wild rice was a, a really good marker for not only the city's uniqueness, but also its continuous growth. Um, and I, <clears throat> I, since I've been in Austin for a little over a year, I'm, I'm hoping to have one, uh, a mural up in Austin soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, yeah. We actually have a question right here where it's, uh, yeah, do you have a, a studio space in Austin or where do you make your art? Currently, I make my art in my bedroom, uh, um, but hopefully in the future, I will have some studio space, but I kind of have a uh, multi-purpose room right now, but it's just, it's just a bed and a lot of, a lot of surface space to work on. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, any other questions, Jake? Yeah, um, let's see. Uh, have you ever had any uh, brushes with any celebrities in the galleries? Any famous visitors? Oh, that is a good question. Um, I have, there's only been one time, again, I've only been here a year, and this might not be a celebrity to some people, but um, I remember not too long ago um, when we had the Jeffrey Gibson show, uh, some of the members of the band Octopus Project came through. It's one of my favorite bands, and uh, they're local to Austin. And um, I was, I couldn't, I didn't really talk to them or anything. I got a little starstruck and just kind of followed them around, make sure they didn't break any of the rules. But I, I do remember that they stayed pretty late and I had to give them like three or four warnings to leave. And I just wanted to be like, I'm sorry, I love y'all, but yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> uh, I, even for me personally, like looking for celebrities, I remember, I believe within the first week of being a security supervisor, um, I was locking up the building, and uh, I believe it was uh, an NBA basketball player for the Miami Heat, Chris Bosch, was coming out of uh, the Kelly building, and uh, I didn't recognize him at the time. I was just, I looked and I was like, he's a very tall man, <laughs> and I, I was very focused on what I was doing, so um, I was just trying not to mess up my my first week on the job, but uh, that's that's my celebrity sighting. <laughs> Do you have one, Jason? Um, just every time I look in the mirror. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I do. Not uh, not for the Blanton that I can know of. I mean, Jeffrey Gibson is a celebrity to me, so to see him and to, to hear him talk and be in his presence uh, was pretty incredible. So. Um, yeah, but um, thank you so much for answering those questions, Chris, and sharing your art with us and your uh, practice, and keep up the good work. <laughs> thank you, Jason. Our next guest is um, a, was a part-timer that turned into a full-timer, as you see, that's the story we like to stick with, <laughs> and uh, her name is Michelle Toth. Would you introduce yourself, Michelle? Hi everyone, as Jason said, my name is Michelle Toth and I have been a gallery assistant for just a, over a year. Um, my Blanton anniversary was back in May and I started off as part-time. I was inspired to apply for this job because all of my life I've really loved the fine arts and when I was younger I used to dance ballet. I was really crafty, loved to draw and paint and I would not say I'm an artist. My other co-workers are by far more talented than I. Uh, perhaps just I'm an amateur artist, maybe. <laughs> um, and so that really transitioned as I was growing up and I went to college originally 
at the University of Houston to study architecture because I thought that that would be a good combination of creativity and mathematics. But sometime in my second year, I decided to switch over to art history. And once I began looking at career options, I discovered art conservation and museum uh, ex exhibition design. And so that made me really interested in working in an art museum. And being from Austin, living here the majority of my life, I started looking at the museums here. And the Blackton, of course, caught my eye when I saw the gallery position, I applied for it and I absolutely love it. As my other coworkers have mentioned, it is such a wonderful family, uh, very supportive and it's amazing to be around everybody every day, <laughs> even <laughs> during all of this, getting to interact with each other and all the way from you know, visitor services to our curators to our director is everybody's wonderful. And it's been wonderful to also interact with all of the patrons and our docents. Um, kind of touching a little bit on one of the earlier questions, what has your perception of art kind of changed while working at the museum? In a way it has because looking at it from an art historian perspective is kind of different than someone who maybe doesn't know anything about art and getting to hear kids or you know even adults, young people uh, talk about this and they say things that you may not have even noticed before. Um, so that's been really wonderful and also hearing other people's kind of perspectives and inputs like the docents and many other professors on how they're explaining these pieces to their students uh, depending on what their students are studying. You know, even little kids, the way that you talk to them is very different than, say, uh, our medical students. Um, so, yeah. For sure. And um, I know you, you talked about art history, and like I think that's a big interest. So, are there any artworks that the Blanton has that you especially like? Yes. So, I really love ancient Greece and Greek mythology. I don't know why, I just do. <laughs> and so most of my favorite pieces kind of lean towards that. We have such wonderful pieces, so many wonderful pieces that are my favorites, but I do always tend to kind of go back to the Greek mythology pieces, like the Greek black figure Crelix cup and the Diana and Callisto piece on copper. But I will talk about the Diana of the Hunt piece by Mikhail Gugori. It is in our European galleries, and I really love this because Diana Artemis is her Greek name, is my favorite Greek goddess. Uh, she is the goddess of the hunt and of maidens. She is very athletic and kind of sporty, even though I'm not. So I really like that about her. She's uh, really great at archery. And what I love about this piece is just what a subtle beauty she is and like how she's smiling just so coyly at you. And then when I read the object label, it got even more interesting for a conservation aspect because there was an x-ray done where you can actually see she had a crescent moon originally that had been later painted over which is why she is now called Diana of the Hunt. It's kind of a signature for Diana to have that crescent moon because she's also tied to the moon. And part of me wishes that it hadn't been painted over, but then another part of me loves that it's like this secret and that maybe that's why she's smiling at us, kind of like she's hiding the secret as if she's hiding her divinity from us so that we mortals can gaze upon her. <laughs> and then uh, kind of just a quick short story that I love while being in the European galleries was I overheard two patrons say that, wow, this looks like the Louvre, which <laughs> unfortunately I've never been to the Louvre yet. Someday I will, but it's uh, just 
a really fun story. Oh yes, in this other slide. Uh, the other thing I love about this artwork is the frame. It's a really unique frame versus some of the more ornate pieces. And I love the little flowers. I wish I could find a frame like that to have in my house. <laughs> so yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. And um, I think we're, let's move on to the next uh, GA just in lieu of time and then we'll get to questions um, if we have the time. So uh, without further ado, our next uh, gallery assistant um, is, I think she's been there, she's been there longer than me. So uh, she probably has a lot more information about the collection than I do, but her name is Mana Maxted. Hello, Mana, can you introduce yourself and why you work for the Blanton? Hi, uh, like Jason said, my name is Mana. I'm so happy to be here to talk with you all um, about my experiences. Like he said, I've been at the Blanton for a number of years. I'm coming up on four years in August, um, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can tell you about my beginnings. Um, I happened upon the posting or a posting for a gallery assistant position a few months after I graduated from college in uh, 2016. Uh, I graduated from the University of Michigan, go blue. Um, prior to that, I, <laughs> I wasn't familiar with the Blanton uh, in part because I hadn't even moved to Austin yet. I'm from the Midwest, um, but I was planning to move down south and um, I already had a number of years worth of experience working as a gallery attendant at uh, the Stamp School of Art and Design, which is part of the university, uh, and also where I majored in art and design. Um, so, you know, I was looking at this position, I thought it would be a great fit. Um, and in researching the museum online, I thought, great, you know, as an artist, I would you know, find an endless supply of inspiration, spending time among the collections. Um, and so, you know, and as a person uh, who enjoys museums in general, I thought, you know, this is a very appealing position. So I went for it, got it, and the rest is history. Awesome. Well, you do a great job. And like our other um, staff members, you are a very talented artist and very inspiring. Um, so talented, even that you worked on a special little comment for the uh, little comic for the Blanton um, during this quarantine, and it's really cool. And I'd like for you to talk a little bit about that. Yes, absolutely. Um, so uh, during this time where most of us are working remotely. Uh, we were looking to do a lot of collaborative projects, uh, cross-departmental projects, which has been incredibly exciting. Um, and the um, communications and marketing department has been so receptive. Um, they were welcoming of my idea. I had pitched an idea of creating a series of comics, um, which would be posted on the museum's social media. And I approached the project from the perspective of a gallery assistant. Um, you know, what can I do to discuss museum etiquette? So um, before we dive into that, uh, just wanted to show you some examples of my own work uh, as a illustrator and cartoonist. Uh, also to prove to you that yes, I can make this kind of stuff. Um, so the work on the left is just an example of uh, a character that I created. Um, she kind of serves as this alter ego surrogate uh, to represent me in my comics. <laughs> and so I like to approach um, illustration from sort of a humorous uh, standpoint. And so that was a lot of fun to create uh, in fleshing out different ideas for comics. And then the piece on the right is something more personal uh, and does include my likeness in depicting my experience, uh, my own medical journey uh, that I uh, underwent a number of years ago. Um, so yeah, these are just, you know, the different types of work that I've created. Um, so going back to the comic strip, um, this was a character, you know, uh, hopefully uh, those of you who have tuned in have seen 
uh, the comic strip that went up last week, the very first one. I was so stoked to have it go up. Um, this is the character, the main protagonist, Riri, uh, which is short for Gallery, uh, which is her name. Um, and this was a character sheet where I was exploring, you know, what the character would look like. Um, her head is uh, based off of like a shield or like a crest and it's definitely been kind of smashed down so it's a lot more like blocky um, and squat looking um, but I just thought it would look more appealing and gave her these really big expressive eyes um, and so yeah it was a lot of fun designing this character and thinking about uh, how she might address the audience uh, and talk about her experiences as a gallery assistant. Um, so in talking with my team about this project, um, of course we want to talk about museum etiquette, but they pointed out that, well, since we're living in a time where you can't easily access the galleries, um, of course we want people to be excited about being there, but they can't be there. So what can we do um, to reminisce uh, about our times in the galleries and, and really look forward to when we do open our doors again. So in our very first comic strip, which you can see here, you can see Riri at home with her dog, just a little sad thinking about how she's not able to go back to the museum. Um, and so she's reminiscing about, you know, some of her favorite things about working there. Um, and this is based on my own experiences. So um, there you'll see uh, a mother and daughter in front of uh, seepage, which is one of the pieces we have up by El Anatsui. And I did overhear a child once say, it looks like its eyes are closed. Um, and that was just based on the way that the piece draped. It seemed to look like closed eyelids, which I thought was so charming and such a great observation. So I had to include that. Um, the next panel, we get questions about the stained glass windows. Uh, Austin, uh, Ellsworth Kelly's Austin is one of my favorite places uh, to be positioned uh, when working and just to hang out in when I can. Um, so a lot of engaging conversation there. And then of course, Another cool thing is being a gallery assistant, you end up people watching and you'll pick up on certain um, similarities between the visitors that are interacting with the pieces. Um, so there's Riri uh, talking with visitor who happens to resemble Lady Hamilton, which is one of our pieces we have. Um, so those are some examples, some things that I miss, things that I enjoy as part of my job. Um, and of course, the last panel is Riri and her dog embracing. And of course, I had to name the dog Salvador Doggy because <laughs> I like puns. So there you go. Um, yeah, and hopefully we'll be releasing these on a biweekly basis every other week. I'm working on comic number two right now. Um, so I uh, hope y'all are looking forward to those. Well, thank you so much. It's so cool and so cute. And keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, our last gallery assistant will be going next. Um, uh, she has a very unique way that she became part of the security team. And I know um, that I really appreciate her being part of my department. And I'd like to introduce you to Vanessa Curtis. Thank you, Jason. Hello. It's good to be here. Let's see. So uh, before I started with the Blanton, I had recently acquired a bachelor's in theology and was just finishing up a year of service with the AmeriCorps program where I was teaching English as a second language to adults in the community here in Austin. Um, yeah, so I was first hired on as a gallery host uh, with the education department, and that was back in 2018 for the Vincent Valdez exhibition called The City. Um, and a little context there for those who aren't familiar, it's a portrait, a depiction of a KKK meeting set in modern day. Um, and it's, this painting is like huge, it's scaled to life, but a little larger. Uh, so it's, it's really intense. And um, even that room 
uh, itself where that was just like felt very heavy. Um, so the Blanton decided to hire a gallery host, basically just, uh, you know, someone to be there in the room um, so that people can come and, and process what they're seeing and have conversations about the reality of racism in America. Um, so, that's, so that's the job that I got hired for. And, and I thought that was really interesting and really important um, and unique of a position. So ever since then, I've been processing that time. And I, um, yeah, I really believe that providing the opportunity for conversations about systemic and individual racism was important then, and it's important now. Um, like this very day as justice is being called for around the country and around the world, um, yeah, so that was a temporary position. And once that ended, I sought the opportunity to be there full time as a gallery assistant with security. And here we are. Um, so that was, yeah, just looking forward to be able to continue holding space uh, for people and grow in my own creative practices. Uh, so personally, I've been able to use my platform more, which is called Give Me Kashmir. And uh, through that, I do some freelance modeling. I work with local creatives to, um, to champion diversity and fashion and beauty, um, as well as mental, mental wellness and uh, the art of black, brown, and queer folks. Um, yeah, so I've been thankful for that opportunity to be able to lean into that, um, as well as experimenting with music and songwriting. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and um, do you, uh, we do have to worry about the times I, don't want to take too much time away from folks, but could you tell us a little bit about one of your favorite pieces um, at the Blanton? Yeah, um, yeah. so real quickly, I'd like to touch on this Byron Kim. Thanks, Sophia. I'd like to touch on this Byron Kim piece called Synecdoche. Um, and there is a picture here. And just a little note about that is that the picture that we're actually showing is different than how it looks in the galleries. The, um, the squares are actually arranged a little differently, uh, just for context. context. Um, but Synecdoche is a figure of speech in which the part represents the whole and vice versa. So to me, what I think is really powerful about this piece is that it looks like a whole group of people standing together. Um, I believe that it represents beauty and the importance and the power of recognizing and honoring diversity. Um, and so I think that the artist was really intentional and successful in being able to communicate such a large message in a minimalistic artistic way. Um, and so really, I just hope that people will be able to look at this piece and understand that there's strength and beauty surrounding them and that you can learn from and connect with people that don't look like you. Uh, thank you, Vanessa. And <clears throat> I know that um, you've also another extremely talented and creative person that I'm so lucky to be friends with. Um, and you have wrote a, a little outro song that you'll be sharing with us. Can you talk just a little bit what inspired you to write that song that um, we will be hearing today? Absolutely, and thank you so much. So the song is called Blance and Blues and I wrote it a couple weeks ago. It makes reference to some of these pieces, including the one that I just mentioned. Um, I wrote this mainly to encourage reflection and togetherness and um, to value this concept of holding space. Um, so my husband, shout out to Troy Joseph Curtis, he produced the track and helped with the composition. And so I'm really stoked about the way this came together. Um, I hope y'all enjoy and um, maybe even dance a little. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Vanessa. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, that is it for tonight's curated conversation. Thank you so much for joining us and talking with us and getting to know um, my team and the gallery assistants. Um, and I join you to have everyone uh, come back at the end to wave goodbye. But before we go to watch past curated conversations or take a virtual art tour or explore hashtag museum from home, go to blantonmuseum.org slash museum from home. If you'd like to show your support, you can become a member of the Blanton at blanton.org slash membership. If you want information about upcoming programs or other news, please sign up for our Blanton newsletter at blantonmuseum.org slash subscribe. And finally, if you have any topics you'd like to see us cover in future curated conversations, drop us a line at media at blantonmuseum.org. Thanks again for tuning in. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for doing so much work and so much good. Um, and the museum wouldn't be the same without all of you. So 
without further ado, thanks for joining us and have a wonderful evening. Missing you. 